Let's say you want to make a bull nose cut on a piece of wood like this. Maybe it's a shelf front, or in this particular case, it's a router or shaper fence hold down. Let's say you want to make that complete bull nose and you're going to remove all the material from the surface here. So that's going to be a nice, consistent round. There's not going to be any flat spots. But in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and show it on a piece of three quarter inch material. I have it right here. And actually it's still rough as you can see, but you want to make sure that there's nothing, you know, no staples, no nothing that's going to hurt the router bit. Now, if you want to make this complete uh, bull nose, what you want to do is you want to set this up to completely remove all material so that there's no flat spot left over. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this piece through and I'm going to show you how to put a bull nose on this piece of wood. This guy has what's called snipe on it. As the workpiece goes through, it's removing, removing all the material, which is what I want, but how do I avoid that? So that's no good. So let me show you a trick. This is one of those times where you can run this and run it and run it and run it and run it, and you're just gonna get snipe unless you do something about it. So the best thing to do is if you have the ability to move your fence out, that's the best thing. Now shapers have advanced features where you turn a knob because everything is separate. This fence is completely separate from this one. Um, and you can actually move this in and out based on how much material you're making or you're taking away. Here's what happens. If you don't do something about this, like I can see that line right there. If you don't do something about this, uh, you're going to go and you're going to paint, let's say, you're, that line's going to show up or stain or whatever, and that's going to be annoying. You need to fix it. Now, this fence does not move out like a shaper fence, okay? This is a Jessam master fence. This does not have the ability to do that. There are um, some newer fences on the market, I believe, that have this feature like shapers do. But here's also the thing. Um, you can do this, you can get these results without touching your fence setup, which is really nice because once you start adjusting in and out, sometimes people find they're harder to keep, you know, perfectly in line as you start moving them. Here's what I do. Instead of taking and adjusting my fence with some sort of a mechanical device, I just simply take tape and I'm telling you, this is the easiest thing you can do. I used to use shims, well, plastic shims that I would stick down in here. I used to use business cards, but here's the thing about those is that they're actually, a that's a fixed amount and it's kind of a thicker amount. So by doing that, you have to take off a lot of material. Sometimes the, the shims aren't that thin. This is, I mean, this is super thin. So you're not gonna have a problem with your thickness, you don't have to take off a tremendous amount in order to achieve your result. So what you do is you take this on, take this tape, and I'm using an inch and a half tape. If you take this tape and make sure it's perfectly smooth, don't let there be any bubbles or any uh, wrinkles in it because this is going to be, um, your, your ultimate product is gonna be determined by how smoothly it runs on the face here. So if that means you need to take off the piece and reapply it because you've made an error while putting it on, you need to do that because if there's a wrinkle in it, it's going to cause the piece of wood that you're running to bump. And as, you do, as you're running it, it's gonna like, you know, hit, snag, you don't want that. So you want it to be perfectly smooth. And what I like to do is use, um, I, typically I use two. Um, because it's, this is super thin, but you can start with one 
and just see how that works. Now, the, the um, thickness that I have here is really minimal. I mean, it's super small. Um, that thickness of that snipe, the depth of the snipe is super small. So I don't need much, but let me try one. It may be that I need two. I'll try one and see how it works. I can always adjust the fence a little bit back too, or forward to change the depth if I put too many pieces on or not enough on. Sometimes you can do that. piece of tape. I still have a little bit of snipe. Okay, let's take a look at this now. It takes a little while for my dust collector to die down, so. All right, now I've got the light hopefully shining so we can see this guy. Now I can feel absolutely perfect surface. There's absolutely no snipe. Okay, now I achieved that with two layers of tape. You don't have to go out and buy some fancy fence. You don't have to put a bunch of shims in. This is by far one of the easiest ways to do this. Okay, so another application that you can use with this, let's say you wanted to um, straighten a piece Maybe you wanted to uh, joint a board that was um, had a, you know, like that edge that originally on this board, how bad it was. Let's say you wanted to take that and use this as a jointer. That definitely can work. You just have to have a way to shim out your fence, just like you would on a jointer, a stationary jointer. If you put a straight bit in here, you can achieve the same results as a, as a jointer, obviously not as big of capacity, but if you're just talking about three quarter inch or one inch, whatever, you definitely can choose um, a straight bit here and then you can choose your router if you had to. If it was a situation where maybe you don't own a joiner or maybe your jointer is broken, however it may be, you definitely can use this as a jointer. Okay, now you can see I have a standard straight bit. Now this is a down shear bit, so it has a little bit of an angle to it. So that's gonna give ultimately a smoother cut. Now remember, the thicker the cut, the deeper the cut that you make, just on a regular jointer, the worse your cut quality is going to be. So, and the more prone to tear out you're gonna be. So you wanna take the, the smallest cut that you need in order to complete the task. I like to take off minimal amounts, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick with my two pieces of tape here. Here's, the th here's the, what you wanna do. You wanna make sure that you are completely flush with the bearing. So you take your straight edge, and then in my case, I just take a ruler, and I come up right to the bearing, and I wanna make sure that that is in complete, perfect alignment with my outfeed fence. Now, because my router bit is in front of the fence, I need to go ahead and bring the fence to the router. I don't wanna hit it, I wanna just basically rub right over it. All right, so there you can see I'm not moving it, and that's pretty darn good right there. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this down and see what that does. So you take your straight edge and go all the way across. You'll notice that you're gonna have a little space here. That's just like your joiner tables. You're gonna have a little space. That's the thickness that you're gonna remove from your piece of wood. 
All right, I've got my piece of wood. I'm gonna go ahead and use this as an example. And just to show you what I'm doing, I'm gonna mark on that edge there. Okay, so you can leave the fence spacing open or you can close it just a little bit. And I'm gonna choose to close it just a little bit. And that's for safety as well as there's just no reason to leave it open when you're doing this kind of a cut. So you might as well think of safety first. So I'm gonna go ahead, close it up. Not completely, but it's pretty tight. And once that's done, it should be good. So keep in mind, the pressure that I'm gonna be putting on is very similar to what I would be doing with my jointer. Um, I'm gonna be putting on pressure from the um, fence here, the end feed fence, and as I start to make progress and move to the um, half of the workpiece, as I start to get past the halfway point of the bit, I'm going to start putting pressure here and focus my pressure on the outfeed because I want to make sure that I'm keeping my bearing here and not so much here at this point. I just want to keep my pressure focused out here and then continue as I do it and that will give me a nice cut. So this piece here is not straight. As I can see, it's definitely a little bit wonky. It's not terrible, but it, you know, clearly it's not straight. All right. Okay, so now you can see this guy's jointed nicely and it's perfectly done. So it just took a little bit of time to get this fence adjusted just perfectly so that there's no snipe on this end and it's just very smooth. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece, just another piece of wood, and I'm going to joint that so that we can see how nice of a match we get. This guy here, as you can see, is not starting out perfectly straight. You can see that nice little bit of a bow that's got it there right so that's going to be my goal is to straighten that piece out so if we take this guy and we put it up against this piece let's just see how it sits right now so you can see we definitely have a spot in the middle just like it would be on the fence there you can see that gap right there now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put down a witness mark so we know that's this, everything that's what we're doing right there okay. Okay, all right, let's take a look at this guy. Now, I did notice that this board here has a little bit of a twist, just ever so slightly, you can see that, so it's not perfect. This one is sitting nice and tight to the workbench, but this has a little rock to it, and it's actually rocking backwards. So if you look at it, that joint, see how it opens up, and that's, it's because of that rock. And when I ran this piece, of course, I'm running it like this. So it's not doing anything to the face. If I wanted to flatten the face, I would have to run it like this on edge. 
different than a normal joiner. And of course, this router bit, you'd have to use a longer router bit in order to achieve a jointed face like that. But this works extremely well if you don't have a joiner or if you, you know, just needed to get by to get through or whatever. You could definitely utilize this method in order to get uh, panels to glue up nicely, just like that. That is really good. No problem at all. Now, obviously, you're going to be limited to the, the length of pieces you can work with. Ideally, when you're looking at joiner tables, the rule of thumb is double the length of the beds. So if you have a four-foot bed, theoretically, you could do an eight-foot long board. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to say that that's going to be necessarily the true, um, you know, the, the way that it's going to be for everything. But I, I will say that the longer your fences are, the longer you're going to be able to join. So if you were thinking about making maybe a joiner here, you, you might even think about making longer fences. Uh, this particular fence is a little bit longer than the standard fence, but it's pretty much the same. It's not too much longer. It's more taller. So this actually isn't too bad um, of an example, but as you can see, you know, it definitely goes past the, the um, body here. So, you know, I'm probably three or two inches past on each end. So maybe four inches longer is exactly. And you can see my opening is almost exactly one inch. It's about an inch and a 16th right there. So I have about an inch and a 16th opening and my fence total is 40 inches. So I could gain a little bit of space, a little bit of length if I open the fence up a little bit, you know, that shouldn't be a problem, but you know, the, the tighter you are, the better probably for safety. Uh, but anyways, use your router table for a jointer if you are in a pinch or if you don't have a joiner, try it. Um, you'll, you'll be surprised at the results. And really, I mean, you can set it up to make really good cuts. This is a down shear bit. You can get bits that are um, compression type bits. So what they'll do is they'll have a they'll have a down shear and an up shear. So what it does is it keeps you from having tear out top and bottom, and it really produces an absolutely ridiculous finish. So even this fin this bit right here is really good. So the finish quality is superb. And um, not unlike what I would get with the jointer, but if you go at your own pace, you know, you can determine how good of a finish you're going to get. The slower you go, the, the better your finish is going to be to a certain degree, right? If you stop, you're going to get a burn mark. But uh, um, just a little tip and hopefully you guys, people out there will enjoy that tip there. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already hit the uh, subscribe button, please. Um, and uh, let me know if you'd like to see anything specifically and I'll get working on it. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.